Ah, oh, hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. It's Sunday, the 7th of May, 2017. Welcome, 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 I say, to one hour of superb, scintillating information, education, entertainment, just for your edification, live on Facebook Live. Scotty McClue, of course, the world's top broadcaster. Here I am for you, dinky-doo. Now then, Andy McCrory's watching, Ron Stewart's watching, Douglas William Bryce, good evening, Scotty, says Andy, Jim Morris. Good morning, Scotty, says Alim Malik, who I think must be in Australia. Um, who else have we got? Tony Kay, Robert Brewster Wilson, tremendous stuff, Sean Moore, yay, yay, guys. Here we are for one hour together. This is where the whole world comes together for a global talk show. Now, major, major updates, of course, in the social media. We're now broadcasting on Periscope as well not simultaneously right now but i broadcast on periscope if you're a periscoper get on there and follow scotty McClue big style john toms is watching robert bain stephen rooney fantastic sean is this your casual look tonight yes little bit cash tonight guys i hope you don't mind if you don't like it do say for goodness sake because we do not hold back on scotty McClue's show i can tell you that we popped up midweek so you would have a Thursday show. And that seems to have been very, very popular indeed. Excellent stuff. Dinky you do, says Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for your kindness, Ron. And for contributing to GoFundMe. GoFundMe.com. I'm in Pakistan, Scotty. And it's too hot, says Ali Malik. So it's good morning from Pakistan. Dinky do, I say. Signifying that we are truly global on the Scotty McClue Show live on Facebook Live. This wonderful Sunday evening, or good morning if you're in Pakistan. Evening, Scotty. You're looking very dapper, says Michael Paul McVeigh. Paul, I thank you very much for that, Michael. Michael Paul. Craig Shearer, uh, what's the picture behind you, Scotty? That's a, a picture of me. Um, I can see if I can show you. There you are. And uh, that's, uh, that's me. And if we go slightly to that side, I don't know if you can just see... There's one there as well. Now, uh, apologies, guys, because apparently I've been a little bit close to the screen. I saw a full screen, and I hadn't realized if you're full screen, because the ones I see are usually in at the sides. So if uh, you've got the big McClue pus in your face a bit too much, uh, je m'excuse, scusi, je apologies, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's only four seconds long, says Robert. What's that, four seconds long? Start again, Scotty, it's frozen. Not working. Yes, it seems to be working this side, guys, so we're just pressing on with it. Uh, hi, Scotty, good morning from Australia, says Erica. Dinky do, Erica, in Australia, fantastic. Is everything working for all the rest of you? Just let us know. Some people think it's me, but it's actually them. Uh, so there you are, Craig Shearer. I just thought you had a large face, Scotty. Well, I do have quite a large face, but again, I apologize. I had no idea at all. It's just when I was transferring stuff and it was full screen, and you could just sort of see this here right in everybody's face. So as I say, excuse me for that. I hope it hasn't chased you away. Uh, all working in Gloucester, says Sean Moore. Fantastic. James Logan, all right, Scotty. I'm in Georgia in the USA. I'm here for my son's graduation. Let's make tonight a truly global show and let me know exactly where you're watching Scotty McClue live around the world. Also keep sharing and sharing and sharing, guys. This show really depends on you. I might be the guy fronting it. I'm only a tiny component part in a much, much, much bigger picture. So there you go. We have an international global show. If you wanted to do a show like this on terrestrial radio or television, you would need a transmitter of mega, mega, mega power, you know. I mean, hundreds of thousands of kilowatts just to get it out there. Spot on, Scotty. We're in Kilmarnock. It's not from my end. I cannot see writing from my side, says Erica. Paisley calling Scotty, fantastic. So we're a truly international show if everybody's watching in Paisley. That's tremendous. Keep sharing. Tonight we've got a big discussion, guys, and it's on 
stopping smoking throughout the world, should we reclassify tobacco as a class A drug? As it's very, very dangerous. Um, I'm watching in Paisley. Steve McCoops is watching. Stephanie Hurst watching. Stephanie, my darling. Mwah! A big hug to you. Used to work with you, of course. And you were fantastic on the radio. You are fantastic on the radio. And we want to see a lot more of you on there. You're looking very casual tonight, says William. Yes, I hope it's not too much, William. No tie. Um, I had uh, a bit of a job getting my button fastened tonight. And I'll stuff it. I'll just talk to the world and see what they say. They say if you smile at the world long enough, it will smile back at you. So there we go. Uh, who else have we got? Stephen McKenzie. Fantastic. Everybody's there in the Scotty McClue family around the globe. But do tell me where you're watching. Very, very important. Now, if you've got a point about the tobacco and you can be sensible, the Skype is on, scotty.mcclue. So feel free to Skype in and put your point. Do use the Skype. There's no point in us having it up if you're not going to use it. We just had to take it down because one or two little idiots, uh, you know, just phoning up and saying silly things as they do. Tobacco is too much tax for the government to lose. Yeah, but that's only one government, William. We're talking throughout the world here and it'd be great if we could remove the blight of tobacco forever. I mean, what does a packet of fags cost in the United Kingdom of seven, eight quid? That sort of thing. Not at all. More people should take up smoking, especially women. Might shut them up for a bit. Ooh, harsh. Little bit sexist then, I would have thought. Um, they say, though, that God created Adam first before he created Eve. And that was so that him and Adam could have a bit of a chat without being interrupted. Uh, right, love your shows. Don't change anything, says Erica. How can you ban the fags? It's human rights, says Steve Burrows. Human rights to give yourself serious illness and to kill yourself? I don't think so, matey. Simon Davidson watching. Thoughts on the French presidential election result? Well, who knows? Je ne peux pas, je ne peux pas. Français très vite, c'est tout pour l'entendement. Peut-être que je comprends, oui. Zout alors. Take your hat off, says Gary Allen. No, you don't want my hat off, Gary. There we go. I'll uh, move it up a bit for you. And that's as much as you're seeing tonight. We don't want to show too much. You've still got it, Scott Hayes, says Simon Davidson. Um, eight quid in the UK to go to Gibraltar, and it's five quid. That's them talking about the fags, guys. So they are very, very interesting. Paul Wright's watching. Everybody joining Scotty McClue. Share, 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 guys. As much as you possibly can. Okay, I like on it like a Scotch bonnet. Well, it's a Scottish bonnet. Although I did get it in Ilkley. Ilkley Moor Bat Hat just means being on Ilkley Moor without your hat. Ah, then they will call man eat up worms. Uh, on it like a Scotch bonnet. Right, so there we are. Now, um, lots and lots of you sharing the video. That is tremendous. If you fancy a Skype call, set the ball rolling. Do please do that. That's not a problem. Now, uh, a quick word about the social media guys. Social media is moving forward with us all the time. And Scotty McClue is now in abundance on social media so you should be able to find me on almost anything in social media if you go on to facebook there's several facebook pages please follow me follow me follow me follow me follow me follow scotty mcclue on facebook anything you see with scotty mcclue on it in facebook share it it's lovely 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 of you to like it but don't just like it, uh, even love it is fantastic. But I love when I see 132 people have liked your video. But I'd love to see 132 people have loved your video and shared your video. That sort of thing, guys. Uh, fags should be taxed highly. It costs the NHS a fortune to treat smoking-related illnesses. It does indeed. And that's a big part of the picture as well. We need to protect people and get them off the fags. I also, when I drive past a pub, I see poor souls standing outside sucking 150 toxins into their lungs. 
Oh, that can't be good. Uh, you can't ban cigarettes. What would everybody in Airdrie do? Said Robert Bain. Go and block the town centre with a demonstration, I believe. So I saw. Um, I keep getting interrupted. Uh, it's lagging something terrible, says Angie Thompson. Angie, this must be something to do with with Wales, with uh, with uh, Cymru, uh, I say to you, because it's certainly nothing coming from Scotland. So there you go. Uh, tell tent, tell tent, tell tent, tell tent. Scotty McClure is live on Facebook Live, the big one, the one everybody's watching, the one everybody is talking about. Guys, this show is massive. So there you are. If you look at it, we're up to quarter of a million people have seen it. A Facebook Live video. There are radio stations that only get about 15,000 listeners a week. And we are doing this on social media. I mean, come on. Wakey, wakey world. Television and radio are changing. This is the way forward. I can tell you that. Your Welsh sounds like Punjabi, says Craig Shearer. So there you are. Well, yes, I had that before. I remember doing a Welsh accent. The chap said, is this chap from Pakistan, from Wales in Pakistan? But there you are. Uh, not at all an easy one to do, I say. Uh, obesity causes more illnesses than cigs. They force shopkeepers to cover up the cigs. So why has, and he mentions uh, fast food places, not been forced to cover up the food stuffs. Remember, you can't mention names, guys, of fast food places. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll just take that out. There you go. Uh, can you also try a Jamaican accent, please? I had a lovely, lovely lady on the radio one night, and she was from Montserrat. And uh, I said, uh, what, what made you leave Montserrat? She said, the volcanoes. So there you are. Uh, you're a great laugh, Scott, is it? You know, thank you for that. I don't set out to be a laugh, but I don't know if I've got one of these funny faces. Sometimes I go into the shops and people just start laughing. That's why I gave up stand-up comedy, because everybody's just laughing at me all the time, you know. Um, Pierre Van Hoydock is on social media. Why don't we see Mrs. McClure when you're broadcasting? Or is she the producer? Well, she has produced a few things in her time, I have to say. So there we go. Um, I haven't spoken to Mrs. McClure for 30 years. It's not, I don't love her. I just don't want to interrupt her. So there you are. And uh, the police stopped me one time. They said, do you realize your wife fell out the car at the roundabout? I said, oh, thank God, Constable. I actually thought I'd gone deaf. Uh, so there we are. So that's one reason we don't see Mrs. McClure. No rain for a long time. We're all running out of water, says Michael McGuigan. Where are you based, Michael? You are running out of water. This is not so good. Uh, I tried to be a comedian, but everybody just laughed at me as well. I know. I gave that up and I started taxi driving, and then people were talking behind my back, that kind of thing. And then I got a job in the helium factory, and I thought to myself, I will not be spoken to like this again. So I left. You know, that all that sort of stuff. Um, no, ha <laughs> ha, said Julie. Uh, you're a laugh a minute, said Simon Davidson. Oh, I don't know. I, I think that's generous of you, Simon. Thank you. So, if you'd like to discuss the cigarettes, please feel free to Skype in, guys. Scotty.McClue is the Skype. And um, feel free to just Skype in and we can chit chat live on here during the talk show. Now, um, I've also started, as I say, broadcasting on Periscope Live. So you'll see uh, we're up to about, uh, I think it's 29 periscopes, or scopes, as we periscopians call them. And, uh, of course, they're uh, linked up with Twitter. If you're a Twitter person, can you go on to Scotty McClure's Twitter account and follow me? Just do that, guys, because this is not all for me. This is for you. We're building the talk show. Uh, those of you who have GoFunded me this week, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've set up a fund for an unbiased, independent media with no agenda. And there's a GoFundMe page, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. And what I thought we'd do tonight, you can also go on to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClure, no hyphen. But what I thought we'd do tonight, still have to do that during the show, 
is if you want a shout out, a personal shout out, I'll do it for a quid, right? And because we must get the numbers up, guys, we've got to get the numbers up. It's so generous, but it's still quite small in what we're needing to set up the media. Um, so there we are. We're looking for 5,000 initially, and we've got, I think, 350, uh, 345, 350. So by the end of the show, I would expect that to be up to 350, 400, that sort of idea. So if you can, go to GoFundMe.com. Just put in Scotty McClure. The page will come up. Grab your card. Say, I'm going to give this guy $5, 5 bucks, 5 quid, uh, that sort of thing, a tenner. If you've got a business and you want me to mention your business, then that's a fiver, between a fiver and a tenner, depending on what you think it's worth. And I trust you to pay. If you don't pay, of course, I shall block you forever. And that's the end of our business relationship. Gone, 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 gone. Oh, we don't want that. Um, what have we got? It's not working, says Angie Thompson. Angie, that must be you. Ron Stewart says, yes, a pound, a shout out. Slow down, Scotty. Let me light my cigarettes, says Robert Bean. No, 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 very not good for you, Robert. I had a weekend in Larbert Royal. What great treatment after falling 10 feet off a ladder. Plenty of repairable damage, but just don't try and make me laugh. It's hurting me, says William Patterson. William, I'm so sorry. You've got to be careful how you go up the ladder in life. You really have to. It's so easy to come down, I'll tell you. So strength to you. We send you love and strength. And thank you to everybody at Larbot Royal. Fantastic stuff. Scotty, have you ever been to the Isle of Wight? Um, yes, I have. As a young person, we camped in a place called Hailing Island. And, uh, you know, unlike Greenock or Paisley or Glasgow, it bucketed. And it bucketed and bucketed. When we washed out, the water was running under the ground ground sheets and over the ground sheets so we uh, we we struck camp struck camp do you like that one we struck camp and we, we went over to the isle of wight and saw osborne house very nice very nice and of course handy for the old saunders row where they built the beautiful flying boats and then just knocked them to bits same as they did with the um the other aircraft up at ref can lost do you remember them the nimrods uh, so that was that uh, what have we got here? Can I get a shout out, Scotty? Says Anne Rattray. Anne Rattray, you're a very, very fine lady, and I hereby shout you out. You owe me a quid. Excellent stuff. Simon Davidson, know, know it well. Uh, he's put know it well. That's it. There should be a K. K N O W. Know it well. Osborne House. An Osborne House, it was Prince Albert designed it. Italianate design. A very Victorian house. Surprise, surprise. And uh, Queen Victoria actually died in Osborne House and they took her across in the Royal Barge in January 1901. It was quite rough. In fact, I think there was some story they couldn't get her over for a wee while because it was so rough um, just coming across. Um, but uh, she died in Osborne House. And when I was uh, helping a friend clear his grandfather's house out, uh, there was a tiny little black notebook, a wee diary from 1901. And we looked up, uh, we're flicking through it, and in January, written in beautiful ink, copper plate, tiny, tiny writing, it said, Queen died tonight at 6.30. That was Queen Victoria's death. Thanks, Scotty, says Anne Rattray. Scotty, what's your thoughts on poppers? I'm asking for a friend. I think they're probably better than buttons because you're not fiddling with your fingers so much. Um, you know, and uh, they're definitely better than zips. So there you go. That's that's my opinion on them. Uh, no, it keeps going down. Uh, eight, a uh, link at eight thirty nine minutes. I can't watch. Angie, switch the whole thing off and come back on again because it seems to be fine for everyone else. The numbers are up. Is everybody okay? Is everybody able to watch? Fine, and you can hear what's being said. Dinky do. Uh, so what have we got? I think you should speak. At the Cheltenham Literature Festival, an audience with Scotty McClue. Do you know, I would love that, actually. You can have an audience with Scotty McClue. Um, what I do for a living, I do a lot of lecturing and teaching and writing and speaking. A lot of after-dinner speaking. I'm far, far better than any of these politicians. 
don't know why they bother with that. A lot of politicians are not particularly uh, good speakers, actually. It's interesting. So I do a lot of after-dinner speaking. And um, I was thinking about doing an evening with Scotty McClure, not necessarily me up prancing about the stage, but just a talk to a smaller audience, you know, and say, I don't know, it's a fiver to get in or something like that, and, and just have a chit-chat. Any problems with the video? Refresh your page and press F5 says Jim Robin. Now, Jim Robin is something of an expert in computing. So what Jim Robin says will be right. Trust me on that. The guy's amazing. So there we are. Refresh your page. Press F5, says Jim Robin, the wonderful Jim Robin. If you were the Prime Minister, what would you ban, Scotty? Ooh, I think I would ban anybody from stopping Scotland going independent. It would ask them to leave the House of Commons. And anybody that said it's not the time, I would ask them to leave the House of Commons as well, because it's way, way, it's 310 years overdue time for Scotland to go independent. There you are. Moss Dash, I have an engaging matter to attend to. To the pip, Simon, we will not ask. If you've got to go, you've got to go. I understand. Pressing needs. Uh, what about the new fidget spinner craze, Scotty? says Shug McDougall. Now, this is what young people have got in their spinning little little fidgeters um, on uh, on ball bearings. They run, very sorry for spraying that, they run very, very much like a, 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 a wheel bearing, you know, in a car, that sort of idea. Um, right, what are we doing for time? Oh, for goodness sake, share point, guys. We're way past our share point. Share, 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 share. Very, very, very important. Yes, Scotty, good man. Absolutely. Edinburgh Festival would be interesting. Or is it too late for booking a venue for an audience with Scotty McClure, says William Patterson. Well, I have engagements over the summer that just sort of edge over the start of the festival, unfortunately. So there we are, a very, very important engagements lined up. Scotty McClure's diaries fill up very, 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 very quickly, guys. Um, I don't know why, but they do. Uh, I can't get it working, Scotty. I'll try again during the week. Dan McWilliams. Dan, here's what I'll do for you. I'll upload this to YouTube after the show, and you should be able to get it there. You also should be getting it on Facebook. And if all the Facebookers are good enough to share, 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 during the week, random sharing everybody. If you see any of Scott McClure, I've been putting share, share, share on everything. But I shouldn't have to. Come on, guys. This is our talk show. Doing it all myself. Tell you that. And I gear it in pausing. I haven't missed a Sunday night show. It looks like I'll need to watch and catch up says Angie. Angie, I'm so sorry about this, but it definitely seems to be working. Guys, can everybody watching send me a message just to see if they can see it and it's working well? Can you do that now? Just type in working okay or okay or dinky do or something like that. Um, and we'll see if we can get that going. So if you're watching, working fine, says Sean. Thanks for that, Sean. That's great. Everybody else got it was shared at Scotty. I've also been telling everyone when I meet them, you're a legend. It's working fine. Working okay, says Johnny. Working fine, says Chris. There we go, guys. It's working fine. I mean, I'm not going to know because I'm actually presenting the show. That may have escaped your notice, you see. <laughs> Nothing gets past me, I can tell you that. Uh, it's working well, Scotty, unlike the Tories, says Gary Cross. No, oh, my goodness, yes, we can talk about the election now that it's actually gone. But the next election, the general election, I think will be definitely an election for independence for Scotland because the Tories are offering nothing. They're probably going to uh, going to win, but who knows? I mean, if Mr. Corbyn comes through. Mr. Corbyn, um, I was disappointed because he did a speech uh, just before the last election there, the one we've had on Thursday, and it was a lot of anti-SNP rhetoric, which of course means anti-Scottish 
rhetoric and you think well my dear fellow that's why your party are just wandering about in the wilderness not knowing if they're in Weems Bay or Mumbai and they will continue to wander about in the wilderness not knowing if they're in Weems Bay or Mumbai if you knock the nearest thing to your party which is the SNP which was born out of Labour it was the uh, deputy leader of the Labour movement that started the SNP for goodness sake Robert Boynton Cunningham Graham the author the Duke of Montrose was involved in the SNP at the start as well and our old friend um, uh, from Sandy Keir Hardy so there we are hello Scott you big handsome man says Fiona Brown I thank you Fiona lovely lovely of you and um, Martin Mon has watching Ninky do Scotty would you do a big brother if he asked you well can I tell you this right I don't mind telling you I went down to um, Arsenal's ground the Emirates Stadium in London uh, just around the corner from Holloway and I excuse me just very very warm just wiping my face there and um i walked in and the lady said can i help you they were auditioning for big brother and i said yes scotty mcclue could i audition she said you certainly can and i auditioned and believe it or not and there were so many wannabes interesting good looking people young people what have you i was one of the older ones and i got right through to the final choice and then a lady said to me, you've worked in television, haven't you? I said, yes. She said, well, I'm not sure we can take that risk. And I said, well, I'm not going to let on, am I? And she said, well, we, we can't take the risk, unfortunately. So Scotty McClure was that close to being on Big Brother Live. And uh, can you imagine at that house, we'd, 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 we'd some carry on in that house, I can tell you for nothing. Uh, so there so yes i would do a big brother a shout out to mobile adventure course scott a says lee denham dinky doo lee and a big shout out to the mobile adventure course dinky doo if you've got a business and you want a, a shout out proper big shout out it's between a fiver and a tenner not over a tenner right but we'll do that for you sorry i'm just um rubbing my nose there is the picture behind you of yourself scotty what's the story with that yes that's when Scotty McClure started 25 years ago in about four weeks' time in the June. There he is there, guys. Dinky do. And there's another one here. Yes, I don't know if you can see that. And that's Lord Reith the dog just sitting with me there. So there you go. Excellent stuff. So that's the story behind that picture, guys. It was taken um, as uh, a publicity shot. By, uh, when I was down in uh, the northwest of England. Don't the fag tax bring money in? Of course it does. My friend said you were friends. He was in Scotland. Is this true? Big shout out to Tam's Pies in Kelty. Kelty. What did you think of the people in Cowden Beath? My goodness me, they've got a Tory in Cowden Beath. Could you imagine all the miners spinning in their graves? Bless them. So there you are very very interesting um right that was that so one or two changes there and uh, do you ever get asked to do after dinner speaking all the time darren all the time and uh, a guy came on one time and said uh, i'd like to invite you for after dinner speaking scotty i said fine we do lots of them he said well the only thing is i would like to hear you first and i said are you for real i said if you go on to scotty mcclure's youtube You'll hear me for thousands of hours. Oh, no, 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 I've heard your shows. I love your shows. Oh, no, I'm a big fan of the shows. No, it was to hear you actually speaking. I thought, where is this man coming from? You know what I mean? I get up at the dinners and I speak. And there you are. And apparently I'm very, very good. So I'm told. So there you are. In fact, apparently I'm fabulous. So I'm told. Uh, excellent. McClure, uh, did you know you're huge in Barcelona? Barcelona, Gordon Sterling. I saw you were having a fabulous, fabulous time in Barcelona, see, and uh, fantastic. I mean, that is great. You and your good lady there, and you deserve it, old chum. I know you and I like to have a wee go at each other, and we're quite right. We will not stop that. But uh, I was delighted to know you were having a fabulous time over in España. Uh, so they are. Scotty, do you ever let your beard grow out? Craig, I don't know if there's still one in the photos in Scotty McClure's website. I think it's gone. 
But I went to do a bit of lecturing at a college with a group who were studying radio. And at that point, I'd grown a beard. Now, I kid you not, I look as grey as a rat with it. It's a fabulous, fabulous beard. Great big shaggy beard. But I do look as grey as a rat. I, I have to say. You're fabulous, mate, says Johnny Linney. Thank you, Johnny. So are you, la. So we're huge in Barcelona. Gordon Sterling is putting my clue round about Spain. That's what we want. Uh, do let me know where you're watching. Uh, seems Scully and Mulder, we're in Shettleston today. They're investigating sightings of Tories. A Tory in Shettleston? Oh, I think they'd stand out like a sore thumb. I remember being at a very, very, very posh do I'd been invited to, right? And uh, nothing posh about me. I'd just been invited to the do. I said, oh, look at um, Scott A. McClure. Maybe come along. And we were in one of the great big London clubs. And, you know, at these do's, you go along about six o'clock sometimes, straight from your work. And they're all there in the blue suits, chattering away and what have you. And uh, there's this guy just behind me, introducing himself to somebody. And he'll go, well, you'll know who I am, <laughs> conservative MP. And uh, this guy turned around to him and he said, I don't think many people heard that. And don't worry, we'll certainly not let on. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? You know, we love it. Uh, Wadge is watching Dinky Doo, Michael Paul McVeigh, Scotty Haven. Have you ever met a man named Dan Gleeboltz? Says Craig Sheeran. No, I haven't. George Raffin is watching Dinky Doo, Uncle George. About time you were here. Right, guys, share time. Share, 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 share. Very, very important. What would you ban if you're Prime Minister? Fags or alcohol? Just anybody who was anti-Scottish independence because the time is right. Uh, I think uh, I don't think you could really easily ban alcohol. You would end up with a prohibition type setup. People would just do it behind their back. The Shabins would come back. Uh, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Uh, for the Skullduggery Islands, the South Island in New Zealand. Ian Walker is in New Zealand and South Island. Is that Auckland? Have you got Auckland down there? Is that right? And uh, very, very nice. I had uh, relatives in Matamata. Matamata. Uh, fantastic stuff. Right. Share, 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 share. Have you all shared? And uh, do you want to Skype in? Does somebody want to start the ball rolling so we can turn it into a true phone in and see what's that? Uh, would you ban the Eurovision Song Contest? Well, I love the Eurovision Song Contest. I remember Dana winning the Eurovision Song Contest. And do you remember um, Bucks Fizz? And also Kenneth McKellar, one of the finest tenors in the history of music. Sadly, he died just a few years ago there. A Paisley man, lovely, lovely guy. And uh, he uh, was, a, was our entry in the Eurovision Song Contest. Did you know that? Never a dull moment on here. Uh, so there you are. I've been in Frodo's house. Excellent stuff. Hello, Captain, you're looking grand. A little bit cash tonight, to be quite honest with you. A little bit cash, George. Now, uh, why is everything about Scotland, Sir Steve Burrows? It's not. It's not about Scotland. It's about the world. Smoking goes on all over the world, not just in Scotland. So there you are. So you see, we're not just about Scotland, we're worldwide. Scotty McClure's Scottish, says Chris. Yes. So there might be a tiny bit of Scottish discussion creeping in, given that a lot of us are, uh, are Scottish. No point in that. Uh, Gordon Stirling's mentioned us here. What's he saying? Uh, Ian Walker is now New Scotland. I could never make my mind up about Buck's Fizz. So Dan and Gray, oh, it's, it's very nice, just the order of juice and uh, a wee bit of fizz in there. Making your mind up, you know. <laughs> I got it. I was just tacking the mints. So there you are. Uh, because I remember uh, a doctor telling me a patient had come in and said that uh, he couldn't stop singing Tom Jones songs. And the doctor said, well, it's not unusual. Uh, now, 
Uh, I hired an opera singer and it cost me a tenner, says George. Do you remember the guy that phoned up he was wanting a singer for half an hour? Man said it was only to take up the hem in his daughter's dress. Fantastic, a wee singer sewing machine. Uh, Scotty McClure, Scottish, we know that. I prefer Buck Fast over Buck Fizz. Johnny, you don't surprise me. Right, uh, to your telephones. Come on, let's Skype in there. Scotty Dot McClure will have a Skype. Not too much. Because a lot of you start fighting, go, oh, no, 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 not the Skype, Scotty, don't you'll spoil the show. And other people say, Scotty, can we not get some calls on? Get some calls on the show. That sort of thing. Keep sharing, guys. Do you like Limmy? Yes, I do actually like Limmy. It's, uh, you've got to get something like that. Uh, so there you are. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, New Scotland Well. Uh, don't you think that it's independence will be happening? Guys, can I explain something to you? Somebody's just said, why is it all about Scotland? But let me explain something to you. And this is, is quite interesting. At the back of every great development in the world, you will usually find a Scot, right? The roads, the tar and the roads, Mr. McAdam. You had done a lot for the pneumatic tires. That sort of idea. Railways. Industrial Revolution. James Watt for the steam engine, the condensing steam engine. Denny of Dumbarton for the turbine steamers. Yes? And all the Scottish shipyards. Craig, are you Skyping? I think you should. What's your favourite whiskey? Says Johnny M. Linney. Well, it's very interesting. I'm not going to advertise various whiskies, but if you want a clean taste... And I haven't uh, had a drink for about two years now, but if you want a, a year and a half, if you want a clean taste, then your Speysides, very, very nice. And uh, I could name those for you. Uh, but if you want um, a nice, salty, peaty taste, then, of course, you're probably looking at an Eilie malt, I would say, or a Jura malt, if you get my meaning. So there you go. Uh, why are you not going live on Periscope? Think Periscope will be bigger than Facebook Live, says Andy Singer. I am live on Periscope. Go on to Periscope, look up Scotty McClure, and you will see 29 scopes on there. Very, very big. And start sharing. Scotty, can I Skype, says Craig. Of course you can, Craig. Uh, Scotty.McClure, do it now. Now take your call. Iron Brew, says Sean Moore. Excellent. Do you know? The biggest brands in Scotland are Bars Iron Brew, Radio Clyde, Tunnock Scarma Wavell, and Scotty McClure. So they, I didn't want to put myself first there, you know. So that's your, your biggest brands in Scotland that people identify with, if you see. Who do you identify with in the radio? They go, Scotty McClure. And the funniest thing ever, when talk radio, it's now talk sport, but when it was talk radio, um, and it had opened up at the same time as Scott FM. And they'd heard about this wonderful phone-in program and they thought they'd take talk radio to do a national show from the Edinburgh Festival. And they were all there in Princess Street Gardens and they were talking to folk and what have you. Now, this is going out nationally, right across the whole country. And they went round and said, who's your favourite talk show host? And they were expected to say one of their guys. And everyone shouts back, Scotty McClure! And that went out nationally. Oh! A wee lesson there for them not to do that again. Who's the most famous person you've met? I've met so many famous people. Because they come into the studios, you see, to be interviewed. Um, so you get to meet them. And um, lots and lots of lovely people. Fantastic stuff. And that's of interest to everybody. Uh, so there you are. You're not live in Periscope. I've just checked. Check again, Andy Seeger. Check again. We're not going out live right now because we're broadcasting on Facebook Live. But if you go on to Periscope, you'll see that I did a scope this morning at the same time I did the promo for this program. So guys, what I very often do on a Sunday morning is a short promotional video to let you know about tonight. So anything you see with Scotty McClure on it, keep sharing and sharing and sharing. Uh, the tartan, don't forget the tartan's a must. I have a bad addiction for the tartan. Absolutely. Andy, give him a break, mate. He's doing his best. 
I am Andy, yes, but you'll find me not live right now on Periscope. I'll probably go on and do an Apri show on Periscope, but you'll see 29 scopes. So there you are. Uh, my wee mam loved her toddies. God bless her, the wee soul, says George. Absolutely, George. Scotty, you remind me of a healing Fred Dibner. Passionate about your country, Fred Dibner. What a wonderful, wonderful man. A man very, very, very like my father. A man of great skill. My father's a very, very skilled engineer. And as a wee boy, at his knee, I learned all about engineering. Tremendous. And going to the workshop and what have you. And uh, my father could build you a steam engine. Wonderful. Uh, if my mother went out for the evening, he would call us down. He would have a little steam engine running on the on the cooker. <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Uh, Scotty, I went for a walk along Loch Lyon. I was enjoying myself. That's much. I walked for three hours. Then I forgot I had to walk back. When I got back to the car, I looked like Richard Attenborough. Here we are in the frozen landscape. There is only one occupant of this tundra. The Arctic fox. Marvellous stuff. Have you ever met Rod Stewart? No, but my agent knew Rod Stewart very, very well. I see she shared the same agent as George Best, the footballer. And um, he knew Rod Stewart very, very well. But I haven't actually met Rod. Uh, so there you go. Uh, can we talk about something else about Scotland, please, the Steve Burrows? You can talk about anything. Uh, you're amazing at impressions, says Johnny M. Linney. I do my best, John. I do my best, that. Hi, I can do Zach Dingle from Emmerdale, I you know, Lisa. Uh, so there we are. Uh, and, uh, well, and, I, and I can do Ant and Dick. <laughs> Excellent. You have to guess which one that was. Uh, now, have you ever met Liv Tyler? No, no, I haven't, Chris. Chris, we could go through everybody who's famous and ask if I'd met them. And then you might not touch on the ones that I have actually met. I'll tell you, there's a couple of very famous interviews. If you go on, you'll hear David Heyman being interviewed with Scotty McClure. You get it all on YouTube. And another thing you can do on YouTube, I've written a book, a thriller. And the first chapter's up on YouTube. It's called Scotty McClure, Deliver Us From Evil. You want to make a note of that? Look it up on YouTube and listen to chapter one. Let me know what you think. Uh, so there you are. Can you do a John Wayne impression? Says John M. Linney. I can do John Wayne. Yeah. Ah, surely he is the son of God. Remember he came on and he went, he is the son of God. Somebody said, needs more awe in it, John. Ah, oh, surely he is the son of God. There you are. That's my John Wayne. Uh, Rod is a fab man. I met him when I was working at a football game at Fort Park Football Club. Absolutely. Scotty, I just found out Runrig, are named after an allotment. Oh, Donny. Donny used to uh, work with us in Scott FM, Runrig, Loch Lomond. Tremendous. Do you know a lot of young people? At their prom, their summer ball, they finish up with uh, with Loch Lomond, with Runbig. They love it. Absolutely. Casey Jones. Yes, remember. Casey Jones, steaming and rolling. Casey Jones, you never had to guess. When you heard the tooting of the whistle, it was Casey at the throttle of the Cannonball Express. There you go. Uh, what's your favourite actress? Mine is Liv Tyler. Yes, well, I mean, there's so many wonderful beautiful and talented actresses around tremendous where i get very very angry indeed is when the television companies um cut in with their announcer just when the credits are going up they make them as small as a postage stamp they go well don't forget in 10 minutes time we've got the darts and i think oh shut your face you ruined the ambience of the movie there you are um Who's your favourite actors? Well, I've got so many. Scotty, that's me calling now, says Craig. Come on then, Craig, get calling Scotty Dot McClue and come on for a chit chat live. Fantastic, Captain. Scotty, when I was 16, I walked in the Marriott Hotel, walking down the corridor. You, Brenner, and Roger Moore walked past me, right up there. And, uh, I, you know, I was not sniffing the glue, says Ian Walker. I know, it's amazing. 
Round the corner from where I was staying in Yorkshire, they were filming Last of the Summer Wine. And I was out walking the dog one night. And uh, these two guys came up and I thought, gosh, it's, it's Frank Thornton and Peter Salads. And uh, I thought, this is wonderful. And it actually wasn't. It was two lookalikes. But it wasn't until they got right up to me. Of course, they still had the gear on, you know, the, the Macintosh, the plastic Mac and the flat cap and the coat and the hat and all that stuff. Tremendous. So there we are. Scotty, check your PM when you have a moment, says Michael Paul McVeigh. Michael Paul McVeigh, I thank you. Tremendous. I shall check your PM. Right, who's Skyping? Come on, the Skype's open there. Let's have you. I'll just check everything's okay. Yep, we seem to be fine. Scotty Dot McLeod, Skype in and have a chit chat. And share and share and share and share, guys, as much as you possibly can. What happened to the fag ban? Uh, you're going off the summer. Off the subject, I think he actually means. I think he must be doing predictive text. Yes, we're banning cigarettes worldwide, reclassifying tobacco as a Class A drug. Are you up for that? Yes or no? I've called. No answer. Don't be ridiculous, Craig. You haven't called. Have I got you on here, I wonder? What is your Skype? So there we go. Let's see what your Skype is. Um, have we got your Skype here, Craig? And I can Skype you. Sorry about that, folks. Disappearing a tiny bit there. Back you come, I say. Uh, Scotty, France and a lucky escape the day of the voting. Oh. Hi, Mr. McMay. How are you, my friend? Says Anne Rattray. You mean Class C drug, says Chris Quinn. No, I thought a Class A would be better. Why not a Class A? Uh, nope, still no live feed this end, says Angie Thompson. Angie, why don't you power the whole thing down and just start it all up again? Because everyone else in the world is able to watch Scotty McClure right now, except for Angie Thompson. That's not fair. And she's down in Wales, so she is in Cymbria. Uh, not a chance. I'm heading to Mallorca next month, and I'm stuffing my suitcase with fags. Remember my friend at the customs, and the customs officer says, where did you buy these cigarettes? And the guy told him, he went, wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> but they were all right they were apparently opened or something like that some sort of rule that made everything okay and i got pulled by the customs once and i said there's pensioners slipping through there with everything and you're stopping scotty McClue. and it was the fact he knew me and he wanted to say to his pal do you know who this is <laughs> and of course it's when you smile at the customs officer they do this absolutely dead pan face and we had we had a trolley with a rickety wheel as well you know these supermarket trolleys so we were walking along with the basement and i smiled and says hello and he goes oh dear and so there you are um ban the fags and what else is going to get banned says steve burrows well we see alexander graham bell what would he think now, Captain? Alexander Graham Bell's wonderful. He taught at my old school. And do you know he invented the telephone, um, 1876, I think it was, to uh, help out a deaf relative. And that became the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell would be delighted. Uh, call me, Scotty, says Craig Shearer. Hang on, have we got you here, Craig? Did you, did you put up your um, thing? Yes, there you are. Right. I'll give you a call, Craig. Let's just see if you can accept a Skype from uh, from Scotty McClure. Uh, so there you are. So if I call you, um, we should be able to hook up, Craig. There you go. That's a ringing now, chum. Uh, hello, Craig. Hello. Hello, son. How are you? Hi, good. And you think you do? I'm dinky do. That's tremendous. This is great and it's working fine. Well, that's a it's just there's a wee bit of a delay, I think. I can hear you in the background. There's a time I'm delay, well no. You? You've got you need to turn your sound down. And you need to turn your down. speaker sound down. Right, just right, right, you turn that down, chum. That right, that's right. that's that done. There we go. Ah, now how's that? Aye, that's better. That's no, better. no delay at all. Is that better if I do that? That's, that's, Aye, that's much better. 
Because I've got a wee, I've, I've got a wee mic here, you see, so I can talk to you like that. And can the people on Facebook hear me or e just Everybody you? throughout the world can hear you now. Oh, God, I better be, I better be nice there. So eh? you'll need to mind your P's and your Q's. <laughs> a, a, a few of the Facebook people are quite good. Eh? I like that uh, That John Linney. He's quite funny. They're fabulous. He's very funny indeed. He's just joined us, John. And I love when people are joining us throughout the world. It's, it's, a, it's, a, really, it's a new format. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a global audience you're reaching. It's a global it's really audience. Good. I mean, we're obviously going to have to refine bits of it. That's why I want people to go fund me. Because there's uh, a lot yeah, of things. Yeah. You know, we could build a proper set. And uh, we could also, uh, you know, improve the equipment a bit. No offence to my wee friend sitting in front of me here. You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's really what it all should be about. I mean, it should be about people's real opinions and real TV. It, it should be about, um, you know, genuine people with genuine problems. What I want to do, Craig, and this is my ambition, but they're not, you know, I, I need to get somebody who's very switched on. Um, I'd like to go on a television station for, say, half an hour at night. Yeah. And say it's a television company that's got linked with a telephone company. Yeah. Then they say to the people, it's free calls to Scotty McClue, by the way. Right? And yeah. uh, and, and we, we get chit-chatting for half an hour. And I just know that that program would be huge. Now, when oh, I, 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 there's, there's got to be lots of appeal just purely by going by this Facebook Live. Of course. Absolutely. I mean, this is Facebook Live. This is what it is. And it's fantastic. And the fact it's global. But some of these big companies... Um, are, are virtually global as well. Yeah. So I might have to get one of the American companies to take it up because the British companies sometimes, if you if you can't get past base one with them, like I phoned a guy at a television company who was a programmer, and he knew me right away, and I said, hello. He went, hello, Scotty. And I said, uh, would you like to talk? He went, no, you've got a Scottish accent. Now, and that's it. That's that ridiculous, him, And it? I said, do you not even want to discuss it? He went, no. And hung up. Now, if he probably thought Glasgow was in, I, I don't know, Canada. No, but if his boss had heard that and said, Scotty McClure, he phoned you and you, you hung up on him. Oh, no, 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 no. You better get him back. You know what I mean? Because it's funny, in 1980, when I met my first agent, he said, What do you want to do? I said, I want to broaden 1980, you're not as old as that. 1980, I tell you. And I, I met my first, I first applied for the BBC in 1975 and got knocked back. Jeez, eh? <laughs> and 1980, when I met my first agent, he said, what is it you want to do? And I said, I want to broadcast. He went, television or radio? I said, well, either, but I prefer television. And he shook his head. He went, I don't think you've got much chance with the big beef face and the tweeds. Right? Uh, I've seen a lot worse. And the big beef face and the tweeds made my fortune for me. <laughs> yeah. The only thing, the reason I'm doing this is we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Yeah. And I mean, I'd quite happily say, look, try it out. Let's do two years, something like that. Something small fry. Five years. It doesn't matter. Let's do it, and then we can hand the baton on to to you know one of your gorgeous superstars <laughs> that you love so much. But can can I can I ask you just just uh, my friends my friends asked me ask this question right. Is it possible, do you think, that we would be able to build some sort of long tunnel that goes out of the earth and actually outputs all of our pollution into, say, the stratosphere of, of, or beyond of space? Because it, it would rid a lot of the world's pollution problems. And then any kind of nuclear waste build another tunnel that goes to the sun. Well, your problem is, right, your distance is for a start. Obviously, anything that you've got any closer to the sun, you've got a heat problem. And it's just yeah. going to fry. Although the sun could probably fry all the shecht. But your, well, that's true. your problem is getting it up there. See, there's a lot of junk in space. I was sitting out one night with a guy, sadly he's gone now, super guy, who was explaining stuff to me, and we were just having a... Uh, a late night can of coke at, uh, at a holiday place. And I was talking to this guy and he said, hang on a minute, let's just look for satellites. So yeah. he's pointing out and this beautiful little silver planet, right? And he went, there it goes. And he said, it's just right. And I said, what is it? He went, it's just some junk in space. 
that there's enough light to reflect off it. So there's a lot of junk floating about. You see, man, dare I say, is a wee bit uncareful with yeah. uh, with his waist and always has been. So, like Mount Everest, nobody had climbed it till 1953. Now apparently there's all sorts of sheikh and all the rest of it. Uh, you people know, are climbing it with one arm and stuff like that. Aye, aye, people are climbing it with one arm. And, and I mean, bless them, but there's even poor souls that have passed away in the process and they just leave them on the mountain. So I've been told, God. you know, that sort of stuff, and they just freeze. Well, I mean, Captain Scott, you know, is up on the... His son, Peter Scott, did a documentary once on BBC round about 1962, so it must have been the 50th anniversary of his father's death, I think. And he said yeah. that his father's body would be sinking at, uh, at, you know, a foot or two foot a year into the ice. It was, it was, it was uncanny. Peter Scott was fabulous, naturalist and everything, you know. Excellent. So that was and that was Captain Scott's son. It's just I love the connections. I love the you know when you're connecting the old world. And here's the best one ever for you, Craig. Right? Yeah, yeah. I knew an old guy who, when he was younger, had written to an old guy, distinguished old guy, who's either his grandfather or great grandfather had remembered Bonnie Prince Charlie walking about Rome. And Bonnie Prince Charlie died, I think, in it was 1786 or 1776 or something like that. You know? And that's yeah. it. So I knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew Bonnie Prince Charlie. That's Bonnie, <laughs> that story. Yep. Yeah. And he was a he was a he was a Catholic aristocrat, the old guy, the the you know, so he would be friendly with Bonnie Prince Charlie. But apparently he was a poor soul, he'd kinda of taken to the bevy, you know. Well, I think I'm going to I'm going to go, Scotty. No, so I'm going to have to say, dinky do, dinky do, fantastic. And listen, thanks, Craig. It's been lovely talking to you. You too. I really enjoyed my call. I'll maybe stay on the chat for a bit. Absolutely, and dinky do. Bye. Bye, la. <laughs> right, that's Craig. We'll just uh, quick hang up there. There you go, guys. <clears throat> now that's Skype for you. How did that work? Um, what have we got here? Um, Captain Scott never liked his oats. Oh, poor old Captain Oats. Yes, absolutely. And there was a guy from Greenock went with Captain Scott. Lieutenant Bowers, Birdie Bowers. He went with Captain Scott. So there you are, poor old Captain Oats. Very, very brave of him. Robert Bain, you're checking up about the Royals. We will not have that. Uh, you're heading for a ban. Yay, Craig, thanks for being the first caller, says Gary Allen. Tremendous. Excellent. How did that work, guys? Was that okay? Well, there you are. I thought that was fantastic. Let me know if you could hear the Skype, if it was clear and it worked all right. Scotty, you're a true gent, says Craig Shearer. So are you, Craig Shearer. Well done, Craig, says Anne. Tremendous. So hopefully Craig has paved the way for a lot more colours on the programme. And uh, I also brought Amazing, says Gary Allen. Loud and clear, says Alex Robertson. Fine, fine fellow. And um, who else have we got? Good evening, Dinky Doo, says Alex William Cochrane. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, can we do a final share, 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 share? Can every single one of you go to GoFundMe.com, put in Scotty McClue, and stick in whatever you feel comfortable with, a couple of quid or a fiver or a tenner? Tremendous. Get rid of them, Scotty. They're a drain on the common man. Robert Bain, you do not know what you're talking about. They are 52 pence a year, and they bring stability. Would you like Mrs. May to be the most powerful person in the land? No, no, no. <coughs> Never, ever, ever get rid of the royals. And I can tell you something. If anybody messes with the crown, independence will end up in the long grass, and we do not want that. Scotland deserves its independence, and it deserves its independence now. The time is right. Trust me, Scotty McClure knows what he's talking about. Dinky do. Very clear call, too long, says George. Well, yeah, but I mean, we're having a blather, George, for goodness sake. Shared it, Scotty. It wasn't the best show, just all about Scotland, says Steve Burris. It wasn't all about Scotland. Steve, if you want to change something, come on and change it instead of moaning and whinging. 
Well said, Scotty. Where would you buy your bonnets? This one, Craig, came from Ilkley in Yorkshire. Uh, waste shoot to space. What is he smoking? You'd be better a big chimney from Westminster, says Ian Walker. Guys, I am going to have to dash. I have been on here way beyond my time. Thank you so much for all your support tonight, for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We'll do it all again, same time next week, God willing, weather permitting. GWWP. Until then, this is Scotty McClue saying dinky do. Time for the song. What about the song? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of winter, zain, au revoir, and a cheerio. ta da laugh. Dinky do. Scotty McClue has left the building. Mmm. Or will do. Very shortly.